Hello, I'm Professor Sonia Livingstone from the Department of Media and Communications at the London School of Economic and Political Science. And I'm really pleased to be taking part in this State of Data 2020 event uh, organised by Defend Digital Me. So I'm going to uh, share uh, some work which I did um, with colleagues at LSE uh, about children's understanding of their data and privacy online. And uh, this project was funded by the um, Information Commissioner's Office. So I want to begin with uh, this um, advert from Facebook, which was in fact all over London and other places um, recently, uh, which announces to children, we all have our own privacy settings. And then it provides uh, the example of what those settings might offer. You could make your information available to the public, um, to your friends, um, only to me. Uh, and uh, in recent uh, years, Facebook, as you can see from the right hand image, has been uh, saying in very uh, prominent public places that Facebook really cares about privacy. So, this is not really a presentation about Facebook, this is a presentation about. Uh, the way in which the major corporates who uh, collect children's data speak to them and speak to the public about the kind of control that they might have over their data and their privacy. And I'm really interested in how uh, children and families are meant to understand this and indeed what is the potential for society to uh, educate children uh, in the kinds of controls and possibilities that they have available to them. So we have all have our own privacy settings and we could, if we wish, keep those private only to me, makes a really fundamental confusion. And I want to suggest that this, while it is a confusion in the mind of children and the public, it is profoundly a confusion uh, promoted by uh, the major companies. So I think it's really important that we make a distinction between privacy in three senses. Privacy in the interpersonal sense. Uh, what do your friends know about you? What do the people in your world know about you? What can they see? Institutional privacy, which is what institutions know about you. And for children, that is really uh, the institution of school, health service, but there are a whole uh, host of other institutions, uh, law enforcement, um, uh, maybe their football club or the youth centre all kinds of institutions which do know about them, collect data from them, do care services or whatever. Um, and then there's uh, privacy in the commercial sense. And privacy in the commercial sense is something that is quite a struggle for uh, children and young people to grasp because they're not used to thinking about privacy in that sense. But of course, in the digital age, with the digital um, technologies, uh, fundamentally underpinning our uh, every action online, uh, privacy in this sense is really crucial. So just to continue on the vertical dimension of my slide, in the uh, interpersonal world, uh, children, all of us, are used to thinking about the data that we give. We tell people our name, what we like, how we, uh, what we enjoy, the name of our pet and so forth. And we're kind of aware children are also aware that there is um, what Goffman called uh, the idea of given off information, information that others can tell about us, that they can observe from us, even though we haven't directly told them, perhaps how we're feeling, um, or um, how energetic we are, how fit we are, um, there might be all kinds of information that we know that we give off um, without directly telling. And then there's kind of inferences. Um, Perhaps I'm observed going to church and uh, someone makes the inference that I'm a religious person, uh, though they might be wrong about that. Uh, perhaps um, they uh, are watching me for quite some time and they make a series of inferences about, I don't know, what I hope for the future. It could be all kinds of things. Children, all of us, think much more about the data given than the other kinds of data, but we're not on it. When it comes to institutions, of course, children know that they are giving data all the time. They are constantly being asked um, where they were yesterday for their attendance, for um, uh, their, uh, whether they've done the homework, um, all kinds of data is given. But 
more important is the data traces, the data records. And actually the school day uh, in Britain very often begins with the teacher recording a whole series of numbers about a child, which includes their attendance and their grades and their um, uh, performance in various ways. And they know that this is kept by the, uh, perhaps by the school secretary or increasingly by the computer. Um, there are those records. Those records they also know contain sensitive information and perhaps whether they have special education needs or whether their parents um, are on a low income and they get free school meals, that, that these data contain sensitive information. And then they're probably less aware about the inferred data, but the um, tech world, the ed tech world, is excited about the possibility of the learning analytics. Um, what can be inferred from looking across the class or across the school or even across the country about all the different kinds of patterns of uh, deprivation, special education needs, uh, school grades, attendance patterns, parental information, all kinds of things might be inferred and potentially that could be used to benefit the child uh, and their learning um, program. When it comes to commercial privacy, uh, again, children are aware in the digital world, they, they type in all kinds of information into search engines, um, into um, uh, social media profiles, uh, that they know they give some data. They are becoming aware, as I'll mention in a minute, about the data traces, if you like, the metadata that is collected about which sites they visit, um, where they've been, what kind of pattern of, of, of interaction they, they have on the internet. Um, what likes and comments they make. And then there's the question of the inferred data. And the inferred data in relation to the commercial world is much more important, I would suggest, than in practice it is as yet for institutional privacy and certainly uh, than it is for interpersonal privacy. And that's the question of profiling. That's the way in which um, uh, tech, tech companies or other companies, actually, all kinds of data companies, uh, collect children's data across a whole range of um, online activities and put it together in order to target them with advertising or profile them for um, some other purpose. So it's uh, the focus of our project really was to work with this framework and then to take these kind of questions and dilemmas to school to schools and, and work with children. We work with children from the ages of 11 to 16 to try to um, work out what they could understand and what they thought about uh, the different kinds of privacy uh, and uh, to see how far they make the distinction between that interpersonal sense when you might indeed want to keep information only available to you or to choose to share it with your friends or your parents um, uh, when it is that you think about sharing information or data being collected about you from your school, your doctor, perhaps future employer, and what, you, uh, what children understand about their data being collected um, in the commercial sphere. And as you can see from the slide, we prepared all kinds of um, uh, games to play with the children to, uh, in, in, in the case that show, show you can see the the kind, different kinds of data we ask them about, and then we ask them to work in small groups and argue about, discuss. Okay, so which of these um, uh, can personal information, your home address, telephone number, and so on, be shared with your school and doctor? Under what kind of circumstances? What would you think about that? What might make you worry there? And um, uh, so we, we, we had lots of questions to, to ask them. I, I would say as a process, children were very familiar with thinking about uh, what they wanted their friends and their family to know about. They had not given so much thought, but were willing and interested to think about what information their school uh, would know about them. Uh, but when it came to other organizations, whether it's the government or the police, or when we move into the commercial world, uh, the different, um, uh, commercial platforms and providers that they know that they engage with, uh, there was very um, considerable reluctance. And indeed, it's none of their business was perhaps the key uh, uh, outcry, if you like, that came to us for, from children uh, all around the country. 
um, when they began to recognize the ways in which the their, their personal data were being um, collected, but not only collected, also um, uh, used to make those inferences, to build those profiles, and then made available to other companies, probably on platforms or using services that they hadn't, um, uh, weren't aware of, or didn't uh, think about in terms of that kind of wider network of, of data sharing. So that sense of outrage, I think, is, is something that uh, society has not yet learned to respect and uh, is a very powerful finding uh, from the children that we interviewed and I know from other research projects also. So then we tried to think, well, uh, how do we respect children's voice and children's concerns and uh, think about what it is that they uh, could be told and should be told and have a right to know and so we uh, underwent the second exercise with them, which was to uh, ask them what they wanted to know. Uh, and as you can see from this slide, uh, children had all kinds of questions, um, uh, partly um, from their everyday lives, partly because they'd heard about Cambridge Analytica, they'd heard about various uh, data scams, data breaches, data leaks, they, you know, they heard about this from their family, from the news, um, from their friends. Uh, and uh, yes, they ask some good questions. Where, where do, do companies use their data if they die? Where is their data stored? Um, why, what is the marketing in selling information? Um, are all their searches really kept? And the children wanted to know a lot of these things and they have the right to know, but at the moment, no one is really telling them. And I would go further and suggest that advertising like that, which I began this talk with, which says you can keep this data just to yourself if you want. It can be only for you. It's positively misleading, and no wonder um, that children are full of questions and receive very few answers. So, to end our project, we um, built them a toolkit of information uh, at, at myprivacy.uk, and we tried to answer uh, with with games, with cartoons, with uh, snippets of information, with uh, indications of further sources, with videos. Um, we tried to answer the questions they had like, what's the problem? Who does have my data? Who is tracking me? Uh, and all the resources behind these uh, different boxes uh, were then, we, we, we did a lot of checking to find them. They were then um, uh, checked and reviewed by children and many that I'd rather like were thrown out uh, but many others were kept and children said they found them valuable. So more questions we answered, what are my rights? What can go wrong? Uh, what do children want? How can I protect my privacy? Where can I get help? And then we ended with some games and videos that really helped them to understand the question of uh, where their data goes. And finally, we made a cartoon, uh, which we uh, invite you to watch also. Uh, perhaps it's illuminating for some of the parents and teachers. Uh, I know for those that we interviewed, not all themselves were clear and felt particularly uh, disempowered in how far they were able to uh, inform and support their children, uh, understanding this, this complex landscape of privacy and data. Um, so, Everything is there at myprivacy.co.uk and um, thank you very much for your attention.